This is an exciting time in Honduras. It's also a dangerous time, but it's exciting nonetheless. Everywhere we went, people were talking about Partido Libre and the Frente. Within the resistance, there is a strong sense of reformation and of revolution. And the candidates and their supporters see this as a new beginning for Honduras. So it's a very serious, exciting, and scary time all in one. Very interesting in Honduras. Thank you so much for coming out. My name is Roger Harris. I'm with the Task Force on the Americas. And I want to tell you about our delegation. As Mark said, there was about 35 of us. Most of us were North Americans from the United States and Canada, but we had people from all over, from um, Japan, from Hungary, from um, Norway, and a number of um, El Salvadorians. And we were invited there by the resistance. Everywhere we went on this delegation, people told us three things. First of all, they told us how happy they were to see us. We got more hugs and kisses than you can believe. The resistance people were so grateful for the international solidarity that we brought. It made them feel less isolated, gave them a higher profile internationally. They were also very hopeful, hopeful that a better world was possible. And the third thing that they told us, every single person in the resistance, was that the United States government, not the United States people, but the United States government was part of the problem that the war on drugs, the military assistance, that was the problem, that was not the solution. And the United States government has traditionally viewed Central America as its proprietary backyard, which is part of the problem. Our story today is the story of the Honduras resistance. And one of the things that um, precip precipitated this was that they elected a president called Manuel Zelaya. So what happened to him? Well, at 5 a.m. in the morning on June 28th, 2009, this picture was taken, it's a news picture, um, of the Honduran army storming his house. They kidnapped him, kidnapped him in his pajamas and flew him out of the country. Now, the next morning, the United States government denied that they had anything to do with it. But if you look at the New York Times that day, there was a very interesting article by an anonymous um, State Department official. And what it said was that, in fact, for the two weeks leading up to the coup, the United States government was in continual planning sessions for the coup. How do you get the plausible denial? The plausible denial was that they said, well, we thought that Zelaya had to go, but we wanted him to go by legal means. We didn't really want them to have a coup. Now, there was a silver lining to the coup, that when we traveled through Honduras and talked to the, to the people in the resistance, they all said that the coup opened our eyes. Prior to the coup, we thought we had a democracy. And now we understand that we really have a dependency. We, that we don't really run this country. The country is run by the oligarchs and their connection with the North American empire. So that's the story of how Hawaii, the beginning of the resistance. It was very impressive to meet uh, many young Honduran uh, representatives of the Libre Party. Uh, this young woman, Anna Rivera, uh, was running for Congress. She is running for Congress under the Libre, uh, for the Libre Party. On the left is a, uh, a, uh, a promotional poster with her picture on it, and on the right is uh, Anna talking with some students in Tegucigalpa. The uh, Libre Party uh, has different uh, groups within it that were participating in the primary election. And the Frente, the FRP, uh, which you see up on the, uh, up, up there, uh, the Frente Resistencia Popular is the most left-wing or socialist-inclined tendency within the Libre Party. They put out a 10-point uh, platform, and this card that you see here is just representative. 
It's basically calling for a prioritization in the economy of uh, collective and social enterprises. Here we see Anna Rivera, who, uh, uh, as I was, was worked closely with us in organizing in preparation for the primary election uh, a few months ago, in no, mid-November of 2012. Our delegation of 30 people were there, and this is the day before they held the primary election, and Anna uh, was uh, basically, uh, we were reviewing the schools and the polling places that we were going to be going to to monitor the election process. And this coming November, November 2013, Anna is going to be part of the coordinating committee again. Uh, so we're working very closely with uh, Hondurans who uh, basically help us determine where we should go uh, to monitor the process, to see that there's no violence, to see if there's intimidation of the public. The significance of the elections is basically that the Libre Party began out of a street resistance movement that followed the coup. In 2009, just to review, in 2009 you had a very popular president overthrown in a coup. That resulted in a huge up uprising in the streets. You, have ma you had massive demonstrations. You had dozens of people murdered. You had the broad sector of young people, students, LGBTQ, peasants, workers, uh, teachers, all sectors of society were in the streets. They were repressed and then they decided, after two years, they decided that the street protests were good but they weren't getting anywhere and they made a decision to allow for the return of the deposed president. In return, they would participate in the election process. So that was the decision that was taken. So they began new, they created a uh, a, a political party from scratch which was going to compete with the two major parties which are not that, uh, the, the structure is very similar to the United States. Here we have the Republicans and the Democrats and there's nobody really else in the running. And it was the same thing there. You've got the National Party and the Liberal Party. And in the election that we observed in the primary election uh, we could see with our own eyes at the polling places that you had a huge number of people coming in and they were going to the Libre tables to cast their votes to be who would be their representative one year later. So this was a primary election like they do it in the US so you basically identify yourself whether you're going to vote for Republican, Democrat or Green or Peace and Freedom or whatever if it was here. There it was national, liberal, and then the new Libre Party, which has basically toppled the two-party domination system. So that's what was extremely exciting, and for people from the United States, it was encouraging to see this taking place, you know, just uh, a couple, th a few thousand miles to the south. Uh, but the struggle continues down there. Uh, the election took place, there was, a mass, there was a very strong showing for the Libre Party, um, but following the election there were a lot of calls of fraud, not just from the Libre Party, but there were um, the National Party, two of the National Party candidates said they were the winners, so they were squabbling within their own party. Same thing was happening in the Libre Party. Um, there were uh, very uh, uh, reputable reports of the inflation of the ballot count of the liberal and the national, and at the same time they were under-reporting the number of people voting for the Libre Party. So there was a lot of uh, maneuvering going on in the back rooms and uh, some kind of shenanigans going on that we could not see because we simply saw the people going to the polling places. 